Hey, David. Hey, Thomas. Welcome to Fake Truck and Real Talking, everybody. Yeah. It's a podcast. He's a cast that pods. And all our friends abandoned us. <laughs> well, at least one had a good excuse. Yeah. One of them's... And Scott. prior notice. Yeah. Scotty is in West Virginia, so... I don't know why. I think... He said family stuff. Oh. He has family in West Virginia? Maybe they're going to West Virginia? Because isn't he from, like, Blacksburg? Yeah. Or no, because, like, he... I don't know. I don't know. He's, like, from Connecticut? And then Blacksburg? (laughs) (laughs) Like... Yeah, we don't know. And... I don't know. We know nothing about our friends. (laughs) Nope. Thomas. I I do know... (laughs) Where are you from? Well, see, it's not hard for me. I'm just from Charlottesville. Like, oh, okay. You just drive like an hour out of here. That's where I've been. Just top one. Yeah, it don't matter. Right. Um, and Dustin is he? He bailed on us, everybody. You now, were not when did he to him. inform you of the bailing? Only, only after I texted him. Hey, here's the time for the podcast. Today? Yeah, today. So like what a noon shit move. today, like twelve hours ago, I texted everybody like, "Hey, podcast 11. and then he's like, and he didn't even get back to me right away, but like maybe an hour later or something, he's like, "I uh, can't make it, buddy. Got something special planned for my girlfriend." That's my co-host. Obviously, it's the top priority. Man, I was sick last week. It sucks. I can't imagine sick being is being fun. Yeah, and I'm going to be coughing and snorting up this podcast. So, have fun with that. Wait, no, don't get me sick. I don't like being sick. I don't know. I think you're I think you're not going to get sick. Well, if I didn't get sick last week cuz you're already getting sn- How the fuck do I get out of here? Uh <laughs> Cuz you're already like you are getting the warning signs of being sick yesterday. Yeah. Not yesterday, you, last week. And then week. you didn't get it. Yeah. How do I exit this area? You have to turn around. That's hard. Man, that's awesome. You got construction equipment. There should We should play a construction game. Uh, I was seeing Woodcutter Simulator on sale. Wait, what? <laughs> Woodcutter. That's a new one. <laughs> yep. Dude, there's a there's like Snow Lion Simulator, which Snow Lion I believe is the word must be because see it's just a simulator which apparently is a, it's not a very good simulator and also not, not very simulatory according to the reviews, but uh, it's like some sort of machine where you're pushing snow around, I guess at a ski resort or something, I don't know, but there's a machine and you push snow around. So you snow plow? Oh wait. But like it's not no, it's not like a plow. It's like it's like you're evening out the snow, maybe. That is that is random. I don't know, I figured snow line must be the word for Zamboni, but snow. Uh okay. <laughs> uh there's like airport simulator. Damn it. Or airport manager simulator. See, I want to make like an ironic one of those games, but then I just feel like a douchebag for doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna wreck into this, aren't I? There's like bridge bridge maker simulator. That game actually seemed alright. Yeah, that's even seems... though it was just a port of a mobile game. All right, where do I get my car truck fixed? <laughs> uh, you can get towed, I guess. Aren't there places to go to do this though? Yeah, but you ain't near it. I think I need to get towed because it's like the fifth time. <laughs> yeah, you have to, yes. We'll make playing video games simulator 2014. Just control the thumbsticks with like a virtual hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I like uh, A? There you go. All right. Service that truck. Are we still rich in all of the whatever the fake monies are? 
Yeah, we well, we had three million K squiggly C's, but now we don't. Because somebody smashed the truck up real bad. I don't know what we're talking about. Okay, squiggly sees. That's what it is. The best form of currency. Yeah. Uh, map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, map. Way oh. to be a jerk. <laughs> oh, there we go. No, there's no red. Oh, yeah. I, I think you have to actually, like, pull out, oh, which is annoying, because yeah. you have to pick a oh, direction to go in, and only then... <laughs> Will it, will it tell you if you've chosen wisely? Those crazy Europeans and their crappy GPS. No, no. I so do you have any the... topics of conversation? Points uh, of conversation? I don't know. Do you, David? No, not at all. Good job. Well, you know, usually this is a little bit more organized. Because some people bailed on us. <laughs> well, normally we like. I never people. expected to be like the second guy. That's, <laughs> that's not like that was never on my plans. Like, <laughs> it's too much responsibility, man. I can't handle it. <laughs> uh, man, I was watching. Do you know who Mike Birbiglia is? No, he's, probably not. He's a comedian. No. I'm gonna let me think about what his favorite his favorite mo, probably most famous bit is. He's a bit about a bear. Okay. It's pretty funny. Yeah, no. I don't remember the I don't remember the joke, but it's about a bear. It's pretty funny. Is he Louis C. K. I don't think Louis C. K. I don't think Louis C. K. is that funny. What? I think it's Mike, again showing that you have terrible opinions. He's not that funny. He's hilarious. He's not, though. Oh, my God. He's so funny. He doesn't really have jokes. Yes, he does. He just kind of yells about things. Oh, man. He's kind of like um, Louis Black. I mean, Louis Black is funny on The Daily Show. No, no. CK is infinitely better than Louis Black. And I'm not even saying Louis Black is bad. But Louis CK is hilarious. Yeah, Anyways, about... I don't, I don't my... even know that I've gotten... That, that Louis CK has gotten re one really good laugh out of me. That brings a tear to my eye. A fake tear. I think Mike, Bur Mike Burbiglia reminds me a little bit of Jim Gaffigan. Okay. If you know who that is. Kind of. He has, I don't know, he has some famous jokes, but I don't know. I know what either. he looks like. <laughs> Have you seen Super Troopers? Yes. He's the guy that they do the meow thing to. Oh, that's hard. Okay. Uh, But so, like... Mike Verbigley, I was watching one of his stand-up things, and uh, this particular one was about, like, his relationships and stuff. Yeah. And there was a lot of him talking about, like, being a kid, and, like, he wanted to make out with girls because that was a thing everybody was doing, so, you know, he would lie about making, a, making out with girls because he didn't want to seem like... He was out of the loop, and then he kept trying to make out with girls so that he would experience this thing and not be so weird. Okay. Because he didn't want to be left out. And all this, like, social pressure stuff. I think... I think I figured out that there are some nerds that are just, like... There's some introverts and nerdy people that are that way because they were made to be that way. What do you mean? Like, they were forced to be that way. They actually do care about people's, uh, about other people's opinions and stuff, and what other people think, but they were sort of forced to be introverts. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, they cared about other people's opinions, but they cared about other people's opinions and sort of failed, so then they become withdrawn. So they just say, fuck it, withdraw? Not that they say, fuck it, it's just they're like, they're always failing. They're, they're interested in other people's opinions about them, but they're not good at making those opinions good. Uh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just failures of extroverts. They're not pure introverts. Whereas, because, like, for me... Well, I think you're... 
I think you're misinterpreting what necessarily an introvert is. Like, if you're an introvert, it doesn't mean you don't care about other people. It just means well, that like but, people wear you out. See, here's the but he, he but like I'm watching the special and I'm like, man, I never lived life like that. I don't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck what people thought. I could have gone out and like hung out with other kids, but I was like, no, I'd rather stay inside and play Pokemon on my Game Boy. Yeah, but I, I guess I think you're confusing your don't give a fuckness with introvertedness. Well, how, what word do you use to describe someone that is not interested in other people's opinions then? Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think introvert applies. I think it's just in 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 the like connotations of the word and the modern meaning of the word. Both senses of these people are included as introverts. Wait, Thomas, do you say you don't care about others' opinions? Not really, like I've never Because felt... that's bullshit. How does that bullshit? Why do you argue with people who have different opinions? Because I care about my opinion, and they don't have my opinion, so I need to put my opinion on them. Okay. They have to reconcile with what I think. And that, that's it's, not... It, it's the best when you do that when you're wrong about something, I gotta say. I'm not that's wrong! That's my favorite. When am I wrong about something? Everybody's wrong about something no, sometimes. No, no, It's not just at all. a fact of life. No, because here's the thing. The things that I'm wrong about, I don't argue. Cause no, because like, you, you could not know you're wrong. No, but I, no, I know, I know when I, I'm not totally solid on something. But you, no, if, you, if you know you're not totally, you'll still argue it. No, I won't. No. No. You totally will. No. Nope. No, because you'll go in devil's advocate mode sometimes. I will argue something, <laughs> whatever I'm arguing, whatever the specific point of what I'm arguing is, that is thought out and right. I'm not going to have this bullshit thing where everybody's wrong sometimes. No, some people are wrong all the time, some people are wrong and right sometimes, and some people are right all the time. I'm just going to say, I don't believe you. I don't think <laughs> you're right all the time. I disagree, sir. Well, fucking name a time then. Huh? Name a time. Like, I'm not going back to previous arguments. Because yeah, usually when I don't, don't agree with something... Because you don't have them. Yeah, sure, that's it. You can't just say this. Yeah, I just do. Here, now, here, listen. I'll tell you what. I'll believe that I'm wrong sometimes when you show me a time that I'm wrong. Okay. All right, then. I'll keep that in mind. No, but there's totally nerds. I... I think introvert applies to both kinds, and there's totally nerds that are just made to be that way. They were forced to be that way. You mean just people who are just like, just suck at life? I, I guess. Well, I don't know. Like, not suck at life, but like, okay. I mean, they're trapped in this thing where they care about social pressure and are susceptible to social pressure, but then... Yeah, but you're confusing that with introvertedness. That's not introvertedness. Caring about social pressure? No, but... Caring about social pressure and failing causes introvertedness. I would say it more causes depression. Which... Which is different from introvertedness. Okay, but what would these people describe themselves as? If they spend most of their time alone because they're used to failing in social situations, or because people don't really like them that much, what, what would they describe themselves as? I'm pretty sure they wouldn't describe themselves as extroverts. Possibly. I don't know. I just, like, it seems like you're talking about something different than introvertedness and extrovertedness. Okay, what is introvertedness? Introvertedness is just, uh, the difference between an introvert and an extrovert, and it's not binary. It's like, oh, like, it's, it's gray. Sure. Essentially, if you're an introvert, you get worn out by social interaction. Like, you need to be alone to rest. If you're an extrovert, from what I understand, because I'm totally very introverted, is that you get energy from other people and when like like that's when you get charged up so to speak like being around other people instead of like it doesn't wear you out it's that's where you get your energy from and like just being alone would wear you out it's not about caring about other people necessarily like i'm an extremely introverted person I care about other people and what people think about me and all that kind of crap. But at the same time, like, people wear me out from around people for too long. I think there's a colloquial way that people use the word introvert and extrovert it, just as a shorthand for 
this person likes to be around other people and this person doesn't. Maybe, I guess. Uh, like, I, I think the way they those terms are commonly used is not in that sense. And that may be what those mean. Uh, but, like, I'm just trying to communicate the idea of... You're trying to communicate, like, the idea of someone who cares about what other people and stuff think and stuff like that, but because he's socially awkward or, for whatever reason, gets rejected constantly, so he just says, fuck it, I'm going to be alone all the time. Or right. just is alone all the time. Well, and what I'm saying is that person gets classified in the same camp as me. Whatever word people use for it, people will put that, that person in the same camp as, like, other nerds. Okay. Uh, other people that don't go out a whole lot. Other so, people. you're saying it's unfair to you or unfair to them? Or both? Well, it sucks for them, because they, yeah. they don't belong in my camp. Right. Because the reason I'm here is because I was like, well, I could go outside and play with people, but, like, when I'm a kid, I'm like, I could go... You know, I could go do whatever people are doing outside, or I could play Pokemon. And I'd rather play Pokemon. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about these people. They're annoying. Uh, so, like, I... It's like, they don't they don't belong here, and they don't belong there, either. But part of it also is, like, hey, man, get... get stop making people think that nerds care about what other people think. Like, I, I, I don't I give don't a know. fuck like, about you. Well, see... I think I think most people. I feel like you. I think most you're people. You're just you're basing this purely off your own personality. It's not. What what the fuck does that mean? Well, you're saying don't tell like don't. You're saying essentially by your definition, nerds are people who don't care about other people. Is that just what I heard? I, I'm saying there are people that are uh, socially weird and isolated by choice. Okay. And then by force. So it seems like I'm here because I wanted to be here. Why? Like, you're... You just got forced into this position. You know? Okay. Should there not be some distinction made between those two? If you don't care about other people, why do you give a shit about the distinction? What? If you don't care about other people, like, fuck other people... Why do you care about the distinction, then? If for my own internal intellectual but, classifications. But if it's your own internal one, then what does it fucking matter? What do the people think? Uh, you know I have a point. No, this is not the same thing <laughs> at all. totally know I Because, do. no, because you're, you're, you're equating two different things. Like, social pressure, the the expectations that other people have about me do not they don't weigh on me at all they don't motivate me to do anything i don't feel like i should do anything because of any of that stuff i may have i may have opinions about what other people think but that doesn't mean i'm i'm that is that is me judging them not them judging me okay so you don't want to be judged it's not no on the basis of these people. No, I'm saying I'm applying my own classification. Now everyone else accept it. I'm right. This is how things are. The way you view things is wrong. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to drive over the green thing? I thought I did. But you're not, so you have to back up some more. Oh. Oh, I'm too yeah, far up. Yeah, you have to get the, the cab over that green thing. Man, truck's a pain in the ass. Now you, now you went too far. Did it. Hey. <laughs> now you have to click on the thing and then hit embark. Like, is there ever any, like, more than one option on this? I don't think so. Uh, like, I think I've seen... You have to actually click it with the right button. Uh, I've, I think I've actually seen two destinations before. But okay. It's not that common. Like, when I see that, it's like, what are you doing with that other menu, game designers? <laughs> that is a menu that you could, you could just get rid of. You know what? I. Do we really think the Euro Truck Simulator Two has world class game designers, especially UI designers? The UI is actually pretty decent in this game, though. 
I guess. What do you mean you guess? Are I mean, you judging I them? Like, I, no, it's just I generally try not to ever think about UI. Like, huh? Like when I play a game, I'm not thinking about the UI, or if I'm thinking about the UI, it's because it's fucked up. So if I'm not thinking about it generally, then yeah, it's pretty good. Like the best thing you can say about a UI in a game is that I've never thought about the UI in a game, and it just works. Huh. I don't know. I feel like I think about the UI. Yeah, but I feel I think about it when it gets in the way. Well, I don't know. I I am like. I'm I'm also really interested in like the the backside of like like I'm interested in game development. So yeah, I I, I pay attention to UI just from that perspective of like, all right, what what decisions did they make here? What are they finding important? Yeah. How have they decided to artistically present this? I can tell you one thing: UI giant pain in the ass. Fuck making UIs. It just sucks. Because it's like, it's a lot of work for what doesn't feel like a lot of end result. <laughs> like, it's what, really what it is. It's just like, well, I've got these menu buttons working and everything going like that. And yes, that is certainly a menu. And, you know, that took way too long than it should have. <laughs> I tried to make a Flash game one time. Yeah. Because, uh, like, I mean, in high school I'd learned how to use some sort of fucking... I don't know, some fucking Flash program where you could make Flash animations, but I forgot that shit and didn't have the program anyway. Yeah. But then there's... Have you heard of Stencil? I've heard of it. I haven't used it or seen it, but I've heard of it. It's yeah, like a, it's... I thought that was like a 2D engine or... Or I guess, is it Splash? Flash? Yeah, it's Flash. Okay. So, and like... I don't... I don't know, but it's basically like a... a I don't know how to describe it. It's it's like you can. The idea of it is that you can program. You well, you can make a flash game without having to know programming. Okay. Or, like, you still have to plug in the art assets. Right. But it'll like it'll have, like, if you want to make a conditional like if then. Is it like node based? What is that? Like little boxes, and you'll see like lines connecting the boxes. I don't think so. I don't know. I just need some gas because I'm sure I probably need gas at some point. But like they have pre predefined statements. Like you can pull down like an if then block and then like drag some sort of conditional thing in there. Uh right. Like maybe That sounds node based, but I don't know. Uh but so I got I got a fucking like cuz like you don't have to know any programming to do it okay. or like know any It's pretty simple. So you can just do it. So you don't have to know anything to get it running, but it's not very efficient. It's pretty clunky. Yeah. So I got it to the point where I had a flash thing where it would have a title screen and a name thing where you could put in your name and it would remember the value. Okay. Which I thought was pretty impressive for not knowing a goddamn thing. Yeah. Uh, and I got it to start uh, displaying text that I wanted it to and then the whole thing crashed and didn't work again. Oh. I don't, I don't know how. Like I just would generate the game and then it'd be like, there's nothing here. You should learn programming, Thomas. I think you'd enjoy it. Man, I went, because you mentioned... Uh, the Stanford Engineering Everywhere thing? Yeah. Like, the fucking first thing of lectures on that? In that? Because they have, like, lectures on there. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's, like... It's, like, programming paradigms. Programming... Well, yeah, they have, like, three or four yeah. different class things. The first one, I've watched, like, half the lectures. I'm like, I already know all this shit. That's good. Uh... Because I've spent so much time, like, digging into... Well, the trick is not just to watch the lectures, but, I mean, it gives you the homework in the class. Like, it gives you all the assignments in the exams. So the point is to, like, watch... Like, pretend like you're in actual class. And right. do all the But work. what I'm saying is that, like, I've watched half the lectures for this class, and there's nothing there I don't know. Such as, like, what do you... Like, what... How far have you gotten, I guess? Or, like... I what was, Do you remember-ish what was the last thing? Why you gotta quiz me, man? No, I'm just curious. It's like how no, far along it was. Try, no, I'm trying to remember. Um, 
I guess my another it's, it's not complicated stuff. Like he's explaining yeah. if then statements. Yeah. No, I mean part of it is is there's a difference between knowing and like putting it into practice and that sort of well, thing. Well, what I'm saying is I I have spent so much time like digging into uh cuz I've I've always found mods of games really interesting. Mm -hmm. So I've encountered a lot of programming language there and to make mods, I've had to dig into programming language and say, all right, what is going on here? Like, I know that this block is responsible for making the action that I want to reproduce. Uh -huh. So I need to learn everything that's going on here. Like, what everything that's said is doing so that once I understand it, I can then change it to be the thing I want it to be. Okay. So did it get to her in into like arrays? What is that? Okay. Yeah, you should keep going. Arrays are like um like an ordered list of uh values, I guess. Like a 2D array would be like a grid or a 3D array would be like a volume. Okay. Just like a list of stuff essentially. Yeah. Like yeah, like when I took like an intro programming course, I also found it incredibly like easy. Yeah. But I think things get complicated pretty quickly. Yeah, as soon as it gets to stuff I don't know, yeah. then... But yeah, I highly recommend this uh, for learning. Just because it's ridiculous that like, especially with programming, there's no need to go to college for that shit if you have the self-discipline to teach it to yourself. Yeah. Because there's so many fantastic resources to learn it. That, I mean, that, and from what I gather, not that I've ever, like, tried to get a real job, is that, I mean, if you can at least prove that you do the stuff, that you can do the work, then there's plenty of job opportunities. It just reinforces my opinion that fucking college is bullshit. Because apparently this I is... I feel like college as the de facto standard for what you do after high school is bullshit. I think it has some merits. Well, like, I'm watching these fucking lectures, and, like, the guy does a pretty good job of presenting the information, but ultimately it's made for dumb people. Or at least people that have no interest in the thing that they're supposed to be learning about. Because... I was to say, like, I mean, isn't the point to teach you the things? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> but what I'm saying is, as somebody that already, like... I don't know. How, how would I ever come to, to be interested in programming without encountering programming language before? Well, no. Here's the thing. Like, I feel like I appreciate the fact that like, the intro courses start at the very beginning. Yeah. Because if you I haven't mean, already started at the very beginning, then... Right. Well, what I'm saying is, yes, obviously, as, as designed education, it's great. But, and that's how it should be. But what I'm saying is... I have, I'm not even that, I was never even that interested in looking into programming, and there still is enough stuff in the world that you can, you can, you could have already learned all of this class and material by yourself. Yeah. It just makes me feel like self-education is the way to go. Yeah. Because, but not, I mean, not like, only did I learn this stuff, but I learned it organically. I guess that makes sense, but sometimes you just need, like, the foothold. Like, I would never have gotten into programming as much as I have unless I had that one intro course. Just because, like, being able to focus on just the basics and having, like, the structure to do that was important for me. Uh, doesn't work that way for all people, but it was important for me. That, and there's a sort of a sense of you need to know where to start. Sometimes, like, a, a subject is so huge, and everything you read about it already has, like, the assumption that you know all the stuff before it. Yeah. That, like, it, it's good to have a place where you, well, you know where to start. Alright, let me put it this way. Uh, college definitely seems like the best way to learn about something, but the point where you have to pay for it, like, is it worth the cost? Right, right, right. And I right. think that's a no. I would agree with that. Uh, because when, when there's an intro class that goes through the basics slowly, that's great. But when there's an intro class that I already know all the information for and it goes through the basics and I paid for it, yeah. that sucks. Yeah. That it completely changes what that thing is. So, like, if I could just go to a college and they would teach me about programming, 
fuck yes, I'm never going to teach myself a thing again. Yeah. But that doesn't, that's not what happens. Yeah. Like, if I, I, if I could just go learn shit and be taught shit, I'd be in college every fucking day. Nah, I feel like, I don't know, college seems to be a backwards enterprise these days. Even beyond, like, costs too much money nowadays. Yeah, the part where it... It doesn't do really any good for you these days. Dude, I feel it's kind of like the mafia. It's like, hey man, you want to, like, unless... Uh, if you want to get anywhere in life, you have to owe us a shit ton of money. Yeah. We'll give you something, but you'll owe us for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you're not going to get anywhere without us. Well, I think the, one of the thing, problems I had with like college is that like I do better in an environment where like I want people to expect me to do awesome work. You know, like I don't want to be in a situation where it's all like, okay, we're all going to do our best. And all that kind of crap. Like. I would like to be somewhere where I have an expe- like where the expectations are clear, and it's expected. Like, and there's like an environment where, you know, positive competitiveness, if that makes sense. Well, just which wasn't my college experience. Yeah, it, everything I've seen of college just seems like high school. Um, now maybe that partly that's because I know people that go to junior colleges, I mean community colleges. That shit seems like a joke. Yeah. Because that's the other thing. If I'm if I'm paying for it, like, fucking, I I expect you to 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 really get this shit across. Like you're doing this for real. There's no bullshit. Leave people behind if they don't want to fucking right. If they don't care about this shit, you teach this subject. Well, that and I went to art school, which was total bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I would have liked art school a lot better if, like, like I said, if it was an environment where there weren't just douchebags putting meat on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would go to college for anything creative. Yeah. I mean... See, I'm all backwards. I, like, went to college for the creative shit and was like, all right, and then I start programming as a hobby. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, that's... That was dumb. Yeah, I mean... Man. Fuck that one up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, like, I can understand creative stuff, like, if you're learning, com- like, programs to do it, but... Other than oh, that, what the... Mm. <laughs> now you're gonna be stuck forever on this... <sighs> God damn it. Fuck you, England. <laughs> okay. I think you're in France. No, I've crossed the... Didn't I go? I think you're... Uh, yeah, I think... Oh, wait, maybe you are in England. Maybe you were... I don't know. Because I'm on the left side of the road now. I don't which know. Which usually means England. I've never paid attention to it. Yeah. Now, but the point is, now you're fucked. Yep. Shitty European GPS. <laughs> yeah, I just drive backwards. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Man, I saw a Confederate flag on a dude's license plate thing uh. yesterday. Okay. And you know how I feel about that. No, that's bull. I think, like, who the fuck celebrates the losing team who was also a bunch of racist jackasses? Yeah, like, here's the thing. Because I see it and I just think, like, that's fucking racist. You're a racist piece of shit. And these people won't admit that they're racist pe- pieces of shit. They mm. won't They won't fess up to them being racist. They're like, no, man, it's the culture, it's the history, it's something, blah. Listen, if if the if the if half of a nation, well, really like a quarter of a nation or a third of a nation, in revolt to maintain the institution of slavery, if their symbol is not racist, what the fuck is? Pretty much, I don't know. It's like a it's like this weird socially acceptable Nazi flag. Is kind of the yeah. way I view it. Yeah, I think, like, I think it, it, it equates a lot with the Nazis. And here's, 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 I'm gonna have an opinion here that people constantly find outrageous, especially Americans, but I think it's pretty defensible. Okay. The Confederacy, worse than the Nazis. 
In an ideological sense. In an ideological sense. Well, I'm not a huge history buff, so... I mean... I mean, they're both pretty terrible. The, the, like, the numbers killed, yeah, the Nazis win. But the Nazis also had modern, you know, modern equipment. They had way more people. But I'm saying, in terms of ideologies... Well, I guess it just depends on, do you just want to get rid of people or use them? Like, which is worse? (laughs) The, The Nazi ideology, at some point, there are no more Jews. There's just white people, and whatever fancy fucking race of white people you want, there's there's just your fucking Aryan race, and that's it. There's no more suffering of other people. At some point, you killed them all. And right. the Nazis used a lot of slave labor, but only out of necessity. They were like, shit, uh, we actually need slave labor to win this war, so we're going to stop killing them right away, and we're going to use slave labor. But they still, at the end of the day, wanted these people to be dead. Whereas the Confederate ideology is constant, continual oppression. Infinite oppression. Infinite suffering. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. If if you extrapolated that nation out into a thousand years, there would be way more suffering than... Imagine how fucking weird it would be if like slavery still was like a thing today. <laughs> like just like with our culture but plus slavery <laughs> uh, that would just be I don't think we would have our culture without but I mean like TV and internet but with slave slave like slavery that actually sounds horrifying yeah like that's what I'm saying like because if you connected like racist 19th century pieces of shit to modern media I think that, that would make me want to kill everybody just like imagine Fox News Plus slavery. Like. <laughs> that sounds horrifying. Yeah, just imagine, like, no, it's a free market, goddammit. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like. Jesus Christ. That sounds like the worst place ever. Yeah. No, fuck South. I also don't like people's justifying it of, like, slavery, you know, thousands of years, everybody did it. No, dude. Like, the Romans took slaves where when they came over to your town. And they sacked your fucking town because they were at war with your people. You know what? I guess you know what I just realized, or uh, I've realized fairly recently. Fuck slavery, just for <laughs> just for making me slightly racist today. Like the consequences of that. What the fuck does that mean? Like, all right, just like <coughs> that obviously still has consequences. Like black people are generally poorer. And that sort of shit. And, like, there's, like, there's this whole, like, dialogue of, like, a race divide, which seeps into your consciousness no matter what. (laughs) So you're already, like, like, you're gonna have those poisonous thoughts, like, in general. What poisonous thoughts? Not poisonous thoughts, but, like... What thoughts do you have? Uh, I guess just even pointing out the difference, if that makes sense, between, oh, that's a black person or, oh, that's a white person. Like, I don't like being even, even thinking on that level, but it happens. I guess, but, like, I know that recognizing uh, actual differences in society between people of race based on their historical treatment is not a racist thing. You know? I guess. Like, I recognize that the society that we live in has vestiges of racism and continues to have racism exist, and there are the effects of that in our society, but recognizing that doesn't make me racist. I guess. Oh my god, dude. I have fucking snot, like, pouring down the back of my throat. So it keeps covering up my nose hole. But, like, in the back of my throat. Oh. So it makes it hard to talk without blowing snot, like, in my nose or something. You should just, like, the entire podcast. I've been doing that. I'm sitting here and I turn my mic down (laughs) so I can just fucking snort. It's No, just let it go, man. Just let it go. No, because, like, I'm going to be talking, and then, like, there'll be a weird sound, and that'll be where the snot dripped down in my throat. <laughs> be like a little glob on the microphone. Well, no, because, like, it's, it's like, in the back of my throat, and it'll, like, cover up my nose hole, but in the back of my throat. I mean, I don't really need many reasons. I don't need extra reasons to say fuck slavery. Okay. You know? It's already real bad. Yeah. 
No, but like I was saying, like historical slavery, we make war on you, we come over, we take we take you as slaves, and then at some point you'll probably be free or integrated into the society in some way. Yeah. Not uh, that I know any- ever read anything about that shit, but from what I've heard people talk about, that sounds like what it was ish. Yeah, and I mean, you like, hey, even if you're in slavery forever, it's not based on like it's not racial slavery. Racial slavery is way worse. Because it's like, hey, everybody that looks like this, you're slaves. That's yeah. it. You're fucked. Because, like, uh, now, this was on Wikipedia. So, I don't take it with a grain of salt. Wikipedia is generally, they generally get it right. Sometimes they get it wrong, but generally they get it right. Yeah. I, I mean, for example... I agree the, with that. One of the most wrong things I've seen... There are enough, like, pedantic nerds to get it right, I assume. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, for example... Uh, I mean, sometimes they get it too right, if the, that makes sense. One of the things that, I, that I'd that i read on Wikipedia that was wrong was talking about Ramses the Great, his mummy, uh, um, I think his... Basically, something happened to him. I think it's, I, I think they tried to say that his head fell off when they were embalming him, and they had to put it back on. Okay. While they were embalming him, and that did not happen to Ramses the Great. What actually happened to Ramses the Great, and the Wikipedia page did not mention this, was his heart got disconnected, and they had to sew it back into his chest cavity because they didn't take their heart out because they thought the heart was the soul. Like they basically thought it was the brain. Oh, okay. It's where you had all your emotions and thinking and stuff. So they accidentally dislodged the heart and had to sew it back on to his body uh, on the inside. But okay. Ramses the Great Head didn't get knocked off. Wikipedia said it did, but it didn't. That actually happened to Ramses the Third. Okay. So that's the most wrong. Still kind of right. Like, it did happen to a Ramses mummy. Okay. Just not Ramses the Second. All right. Was that the point? I thought this had to do with slavery. No, it didn't okay. have to do with slavery. I'm just saying... Okay, and I was like, wait, why, wrong... are we, why are we no. talking about Wikipedia all of a sudden? What's going on? <laughs> no, there are wrong things sometimes. That's an example of a wrong thing. But what I'm saying is there was still truth in the wrong thing. So it wasn't completely wrong. Right. Anyway, I was reading... Uh, and I think I've seen this multiple places, but... Um, there were only like... 200,000... Two to three hundred thousand slaves brought over from Africa to America throughout the entire history of slavery. Two to three or two three hundred. Two to three hundred thousand. Okay. And by the time that's the Civil a lot of War, people. By the time of the Civil War, there are millions of slaves. Okay. How did that happen? Babies. By breeding people as slaves. Yep. By, hey, generations, of. Hey, you're you you had a kid, they're slaves too. Yeah. The Confederacy and the American the racism of Ameri- of of nineteenth century America and eighteenth century America is appalling. It is I like I said, I if not as bad as the Nazis, which I would say I think it's maybe worse, it's definitely very, very close. We have a pretty brutal culture, gotta say. Well, that's why I like the Civil War so much. Is that it is a... I just hate people that fucking romanticize that shit. Yeah. Like... Well, that, but that's why I love the Civil War. Because these... The, 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 the fucking... Now, I'm not saying it like, got rid of racism. But it said, hey, this thing is super fucking racist. You people now pay in blood for what you've done. Yeah. No, I'm, 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 all, I'm all about some marching to the sea. And, like, because when you learn about the Civil War, because people kind of think about it of, like, well, that's a thing we did, but then we just didn't really give a shit after that. You know, it's just, hey, we decided to get rid of slavery, but then we were still, then we, then everybody was still super racist, because after the Civil War, super racist shit got done. That's not how it happened. There was a lot of comparatively modern uh, ideology during the Civil War. There were people, I mean, there, what happened was there were people that were considered fucking radical because they believed in actual equality and they wanted to fucking kill everybody in the south burn it all down yeah. and just fucking colonize it with not racist people uh and like the, you, you could easily find 
ideas about race as modern as today. But what happened is once, because because then when when like all of the like most racist portion of the country breaks off, and you have control, and these people have control of the government, now you can just fucking pass all the laws you want. You can make all the not racist shit you want. Like like the the amendment to ban slavery, the southern states never approved that. They weren't part of the government when that was passed. Okay. They had it dictated to them at gunpoint. And then those states and those people got reintegrated into the country, and then the country was racist again. That's what happened. So you would have preferred a more of a scorched earth policy. It, it, people got wore out. Like, the, the, there was a radical core that was responsible for leading that, or pushing the ideas of that war. And, but most of the people actually fighting the war were normal people. They got worn out by the war. The ideas of that time got, it was, it was, hey, either we could continue this struggle by fighting the rest of our nation for this cause, or we could just, reintegrate these people and just sort of give up this thing that we've been fighting over four years. You know, people just got tired of it. Right. So, the, 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 the steam ran out of that. But yes, I, I, so, man, and I've said it before, sometimes I wish we could just, uh, just a fucking animated bronze statue of George H. Thomas would come here and knock people's houses down. He's George H. Thomas. Uh, Virginian. God damn it. He's a, he was a Union general from Virginia. Uh, and a, a pretty damn good general. And there, as far as I know, and I've looked, there is not any monument to George H. Thomas in the state of Virginia. Okay. Which is where he was from. But we got plenty of monuments for Civil War heroes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Every fucking racist, crazy piece of shit. We have I 40... wonder if somebody, like, if somebody just destroyed those monuments, do you think there'd be the political will to put them back up at this point? I think so, yeah. Yeah. They would be put back up. And I hate that. And there is, there is a monument of George H. Thomas, but you know where it is? Washington fucking D.C. Okay. Well, it's crazy, because, like, you go up to D.C., and there's all sorts of uh, all sorts of union shit. It's great. There's like there's a statue of um, of General Hancock. There's a statue. Uh, I mean, there's a monument for the Grand Army of the Republic, which is for Union veterans. Uh, there's all sorts when of did, stuff about Lincoln. When did Monument Avenue happen? Here? Yeah. I don't know. Because I mean, like, see, I don't know what a lot level about, of fucked up. I don't know a lot about Richmond history because it's all like, fuck Richmond. Richmond sucks. Historically, Richmond does suck ass. It was the capital of the Confederacy. Yes. Like, if, fuck this place. And then, like, I don't need to know the history of Monument Avenue, because everything we put there sucks. Well, we put Arthur Ashe there, so it's all better. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Like I was saying, I want, I want everything, I want fucking all of D.C. to come to life, come down here and kick our ass. Okay. Because it's crazy. It's crazy that I can just go, like, 90 miles north, and all of a sudden there's not racist shit anymore. And people try to say, like, oh, the Civil War is done. You know, that's a long time ago. You can't even see it anymore. It's like, I, I can clearly see it. This state, tons of racist bullshit. Up there, no racist bullshit. Well, I wouldn't go that far. No, dude. No. If I'm you're not, talking about, like, monuments and shit, sure. I, no, I, I'm saying... Okay, I'm not saying, like, alright, there's no racism in Washington, D.C. I ain't saying that. I'm saying, we... In D.C., they erected monuments to generals who fought for a cause that ended slavery. Okay. As a, as a broad thing that is anti-racist. Right. There was a racist thing going on, and it was stopped because of the thing... That these people contributed to. Okay. And here, we erect monuments for people who fought for that cause of racism. A cause to preserve racism in a horrible, oppressive act. 
Yeah. I don't know. I have I have lots of opinions about the Civil War. So See, now you get to feel what it's like when it's just me and Dustin. What do you mean? What what happens is ultimately I just end up shouting about history and everybody's bored. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Fuck, now I have to cough. <coughs> Steve's on the microphone. <coughs> God damn it, it's the worst. Like, I have, like, just a little bit of sick, so now I have to keep turning this microphone off. You can just let it ride, man. No. Let it ride. No, it's so annoying. Where's <laughs> my Doritos? <laughs> <laughs> like, Scotty coughs into the mic all the time, and I hate it. Yeah. I'm sure you hate it, too, listener. Still no. need to listen to one of these one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> you could. It's very easy. Yeah, but, like, Do you know I've you... heard it once. <laughs> well, you know, there's we do something that I don't have you on them. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you even know where you would go? I, I, I Google FDRT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that would work, but that's funny. Did it? You don't even know where these go. I've been to the site before. Yeah. Well, and also I used to like fucking blast. The episodes to like my 20 Facebook friends. I got the stickers. <laughs> yep. What the fuck? Dirt Road. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Our country has some pretty systemic fucked up shit. Yeah. But so does, I guess, every country. But, man. Fuck stupid people. Well, it's not even that. You know what I really enjoy about... Because you remember when Bush was president? Uh, I feel like there was a lot more European vitriol about America. Yeah. Especially our president. Yep. Like a lot of Europeans saying how terrible Bush is. Yeah. Uh, I think we've reached that moment now for Obama. Um, no. It's not, it's not nearly as bad, I don't think. Uh, I think Europeans have mostly shut the fuck up about Obama. Because he has been as bad as Bush for the entire length of his presidency. It's just Europeans joined us in the voting for Obama thing. Like, Europeans were like, yeah, Obama, great. Yeah. And they fucked up. You asked for this, Europeans. I really enjoy that. They're now part of this. They, they're they culpable. They at least agreed with us when well, it, we made that decision. Well, it's just, I mean, a lot of it's just what these people look and act like, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just... Well, and I, I and I think it just comes down to Europeans' perception of, like, because Obama was on the American political left, he was more palatable to Europeans regardless of his opinions. He just presented in a way that was more palatable to them. Yeah. He talked to them the way Europeans want to be talked to. Even though, in terms of policy, completely, completely the same as Bush. I wouldn't it, it, say completely the same as Bush. But completely the same. How is he different? Like I said, I keep going back to stuff like the healthcare stuff. That would never have happened under Bush. It. I mean, I guess. All right. So, I mean, to say they're completely the same, and there aren't reasons to vote for one over the other, I think is not true. But I don't think that someone should be voting. Based on healthcare. That is certainly opinion. <laughs> I, I mean, like, how about the part where he... Am I, can I... Am I, can I A? Am I done? Well, you just skipped the part. No! No! Oh, no, wait. I don't think you did. I okay. Think you actually are. Oh, I think I'm you pure. Did. I'm pure. <laughs> or at least if you did skip it, I don't see it there. Okay. I think you're good, though. All right. Okay. <laughs> Is it time? I think it's about time. Is it that time? So. Who has to make the fart noise? Well, we don't have to make fart noise. I mean, it seems like tradition. Yeah, but I mean, I think lately... Our... Like, I don't want to make the fart noise, though. I don't I think that's the thing that Dustin and Scotty really 
latched on to. Yeah. Not so much. Like, I don't need there to be a fart noise. All right. Well, then, what, how should we... How about we just, like, kind of vaguely talk and eventually we just yeah, cut it off? Yeah, I think it's way funnier to just sort of awkwardly let it tail off. Yeah. So, I mean, at any point, this could not be on the show or it could be on the show. <laughs> as soon as... as it's soon really as, up to you, Thomas. Yeah, as soon as us talking stops being funny, <laughs> then I cut it. Okay. <laughs> That would be that right there would have been the perfect time to make a fart noise. By the way, well, we didn't. We didn't because we're not we're not Dustin and Scotty. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody. No, you can't just say goodbye and then I like can. not tail off. No, we're just, we we agreed to tail off. Maybe we already did. I'm tailing off right now. Like oh, you I said did. goodbye. But I'm making sure that there's extra time afterwards to talk and tail off. Because ended it on a goodbye is just bullshit. <laughs> All right. Okay then. Are you happy? Hit the button! God damn it! Hit the button! I don't have to, like you're saying. I can cut it at any point. Shit! <laughs> I just don't know what's gonna happen from here on out. <laughs>